Welcome everybody, in this video we're going to talk about how to configure the Redis cache to perhaps avoid some pitfalls like your memory overflowing. And one form of configuration I'm going to talk about is extension, because maybe you want your Redis cache to be a little bit more feature rich, right? You maybe want to connect your Redis up to a PubSub queue and whatnot. Anyway, strap yourself in, let's go. First, we're going to cover the distributed cache entry options available on the iDistributed Cache interface. Let's quickly take a look at this. Uh, it's always been present on the set and set async. We need to supply distributed cache entry options. We may not have seen it because we've been using the set string extension function. And if we take a look at it, uh, the options are available. And that's because I'm using it here before we've been using these two overloads, which are basically using the not that one, this set function, it's it's just, it's still using the set and it's still passing the option. It just passes uh, the default implementation or it, like constructs a default object for the entry options. Anyway, it's an object that you can pass when setting uh, something into your cache. Let's go ahead and see how it looks like. So first is we have absolute expiration date. You specify a time when that time is either reached, like 1st of October, if that time is reached, our cache entry is gone. We can say, please go away in 10 seconds or 20 seconds, what I have here. And rather than saying a concrete time when you should disappear, you're saying how long it should take for you to disappear. Okay. These are two ways of specifying time to live TTL. It's a notation used very widely. So just knowing that TTL just means that basically a self-destructive bomb with a timer set on it or an exact date and perhaps a sliding expiration, which we're going to take a look at in a second. But anyway, absolute expiration first, we're going to set a string to a key with some with these options, right? Uh, if you want to set an absolute expiration date, absolute expiration date, you can see the type is date time offset. This is where I would set expire on 1st of December. I don't want to do that because this seems a little bit more intuitive and we're just going to say expire in 20 seconds. I'm going to run this. I'm going to get a key, which is not really relevant for this example. I got my instance running. We can get all keys and then we age get uh, all key. We will see absolute expiration. Uh, however, how does it work? Like how does if we basically ping it a couple of more times, if I basically wait a little bit and cut the video here, after some time when I do basically try to get age get all, it's going to disappear, right? So the entry that I've star stored there, 20 seconds past, it has vanished. So let's run this again. And this is a Redis functionality. If I type in TTL key time to live key, it will output in seconds how long it has left to live. Okay. Once this reaches zero, my entry will be gone from the database. Otherwise, up until then, it is still in there. So that is the absolute expiration date. Next thing is the sliding expiration date. You may be familiar with it if you have been working with cookies. And it's basically the cookie has 10 minutes to expire. As long as you're using the cookie, it basically means it has 10 minutes to expire since you've last used it. Unlike the absolute expiration date, which is 10 minutes since its creation. Okay, so sliding expiration is 10 minutes since you've last used it. Let's go ahead and take a look at it. Here I have 30 seconds. I'm giving myself a little bit more time. Okay, uh, so I run this and just just a note. I have the get here. I will comment out sliding expiration. Let's take a look at time to live key. We're in 21 seconds. We're good. And I'm, I'm setting the same key. So let's go ahead and each get all key. Time to live is 12. Okay, why did it not reset? Right, we can maybe we need to get data. Uh, and no, it is still there. So what gives? Uh, why? Why is Redis not working? <laughs> right? Uh, and we try to get data and we get no right because our data just popped from cache. Why is it not working? Well, this is actually a Redis cache op uh, uh, functionality uh, implemented here. And if we let me run this again, I will uh, uh, run sliding expiration here. We're going to time to live keys and actually no, I want to run H get all key. You will see that the sliding expiration is set here instead of the absolute expiration here. And this is what the internals of Redis cache are using to basically track it. If I comment out the sliding expiration and I just run the get, uh, this is what actually internally resets the time to live, right? So every time I run it, 
it resets. Otherwise, it keeps running down, right? I run it, and it resets. So hopefully that paints a bit of a clearer picture. You can uh, provide your options here. And this is one way to control how long your keys stay in Redis. Okay, why would you want to do this? Well, uh, computers don't have infinite memory, even though applications work as if computers do have infinite memory. What you don't want to happen is your cache to overflow with memory six months down the line, because right now we are kind of like in control and we're not, we're, we're, we're putting essentially like pin, peanuts and like little nuts in a big jar and, uh, you know, just throwing them in the swimming pool. And it's, a, it's not a very effective. We can't see any, anything bad happening. Well, if you have, let's say, 100 gigabytes of uh, memory for your Redis instance and well, Google will never run out and then you set your application to run and six months down the line, the cache is full and you're starting to get Redis errors and you're like, oh my God, uh, how do I fix this? Yeah, first of all, you don't want that to happen. Uh, you either control it this way or you set an eviction policy on your Redis instance. The second th ex example here that I have uh, set up is essentially, again, a, a Redis connection. I have two megabytes of uh, integer here, right? So just an integer to represent how big a megabyte is. Uh, I have 10 chunks. So I'm going to divide two megabytes into 10 chunks. Oh, this is basically one chunk size. It's not very accurate because I'm converting it. Actually, no, uh, yeah, well, not very accurate because I'm converting it into a string and a character is two bytes rather than uh, one. Uh, you know, if we do a size off, we're gonna get two. So anyway, uh, I have a couple of big words here. I do chunks plus one in case this is two megabytes and I'm just bad at math, but then we just go ahead and set it all in cache. So we're basically just want to fill up the cache and I'm going to limit my Redis instance to two megabytes, right? First, we're going to take a look here using Redis as an LRU cache. LRU is last recently used or least recently used. Uh, we're going to lo look at it and we're going to take a look at some quirks. If you're having trouble with understanding last or least recently used, the key that you haven't used for a long time, that's the one that we're going to get rid of, okay? The one that we're not using. And that's the simpler, uh, simpler approach. Anyway, we can set conf some configuration on here. We, let's see, um, config. This is the command. Again, I'm just showing you because all this stuff in the, is in the do documentation. Uh, you want to specify your eviction policy. Let's first clear this. We're going to say config get max memory. It's set to zero. That means it's just infinite at this point. And I'm going to say set it to two megabytes. Okay. We're going to verify it. There it is. So this is basically what two megabytes look like. And now we want an eviction policy. Uh, if I go again back here, just so I don't misspell anything, max memory policy is also a lot to write. So config get max memory policy, no eviction. This is the one described here amongst the one that we're going to take a look at, which is all keys LRU. There are a couple of other ones. I suggest you go read through those. You're going to encounter situations where one of those might be better than the, the essentially what should be the default one. And you know, you want to be in that situation going, oh, actually we can use this instead of that and it will be a lot better. Okay, so be informed, um, be a dangerous weapon. So anyway, uh, max memory policy, no eviction. We want to set that to all keys LRU. Uh, let's go ahead and change this to set all keys LRU, set that. So if we get this, we can see it's all keys LRU. And I actually, I, sh I should really show what happens if we try to set it up, uh, what's called, uh, if we try to use it and go overboard, right? So I've limited to two megabytes. Let's stay there. Keys, we have a key. As soon as I don't, I, I stop failing, right? We have no keys in our Redis instance. What we want to do now is Let's just do info memory. It's another command that you can run to basically see how much memory is being used. We're just under a megabyte. Okay. Let's go ahead and fill our cache up with a bunch of values and run the script. And we're going to get an error. Uh, not too surprising. I mean, we are running out of memory, which is basically this little flag here. OOM command not allowed when the used memory is more than max memory. And again, if we run info memory, we're going to see that 
we've essentially almost approached the border. As I said, this is not exactly small chunks. These are, you know, big words, very big words. What we want to do is we just want to see what did we actually store? And we'll see that zero, two, one, three. We've, we have a process of the lifetime of our application and the lifetime of our application is to essentially store 10 values. And we've ran through half of it. This is a cut in our application. Our application hasn't finished its work, right? It's not it hasn't finished it's it broke right now when other people when you deploy your application out there you don't expect it's not a script it's not something that you're going to run and it's going to finish the application there it sits there and it works for infinity uh, you don't want it to stop okay you don't want this error to happen and this exception to stop your application you want to have an eviction policy that will free up memory on the redis instance at some point so Let's uh, flush all of this. We'll just go ahead and clear all the keys here. What we want to do next is actually, yeah, let's set the policy. I already have the command somewhere here and no eviction, all keys, all are you. Okay. So there we are. Let's run this again and our application finishes, right? But in your case and in my case in production, what, that gonna, what that's going to mean is my application is just going to keep running and it's not going to crash. For the keys, we can take a look and we're going to see 9, 10, 8, 7 being stored. We can run this again and uh, 9, 10, 8, 7. So pretty good. Pretty good. Uh, what about a little exercise where we're just going to, let's do it first. We're going to try to be logical and then we're going to see some unexpected behavior. Okay. For all words, right? Less, least recently used. So the key that we're not using let's try to keep getting that key so we are using it and see if it stays in redis okay so here we are cache get uh, i'm just gonna get a key i'm just gonna keep getting zero because that's the one there and let's just to string it cool i'm gonna be constantly getting this key right there and uh, let's just have uh you know even playing field i'm gonna flush all the keys and let's run this cool we've run it all the keys and we're still at the same spot so is red is broken uh, well you know what is going on we are we do keep using the key here uh you can see something weird happening here so 10 8 7 6 where did the 9 go i thought we were going in order all uh, right we're going to check the keys again and you know mo most of the time we will go in order let's do something like this uh, i promise i will stop uh what's it called dragging this out uh let's make this async we're going to delay this cool let's check all the keys and i mean uh, again it looks a little bit weird so anyway why is our zero not being kept and other keys are being evicted thing is Redis is fast and with optimization and uh, being fast comes a, what's it called, uh, a cost. So the last recently used algorithm that they implement is approximated. So basically you're not going to get 100% accuracy on what you're evicting. So ideally this is what you want. So basically the gray ones are the ones that are getting evicted the darker gray ones are the ones that are staying the green ones are the ones being added if you look here you can see most of the time it is evicting in correct places but the dark gray spots that are being left there are the th are it being inaccurate and it's removing something that is perhaps hasn't been the least used which would be somewhere on this top end and this is the most recently used and you know it's being a little bit inaccurate and there is this option that you can specify to basically try to tweak its accuracy where for 10, 10 samples you get a little bit more accuracy for lesser samples you get a little, a little bit less accuracy you need to configure this i haven't played around with this it's good if you want to squeeze out every little bit of performance i have not been in that situation i need to stand up solutions quickly okay so that's the deal there. Um, we don't get 100% accuracy with 
basically having uh, this get here. Now let me remove the task async before we get on to the next point. Just to recap, before we move on to a little bit of extension, I'm just gonna talk and uh, not really show any code examples, but yeah, time to live and uh, eviction policies, you do not want your memory to overflow. Your machines will have finite memory and you wanna be using it efficiently. You either store keys and you expect them to expire and you give them a time to live, either absolute or sliding, basically sliding if we keep using the key, it will never go because it's still useful. As absolute expiration just means we'll throw, away, throw it away at some point. And uh, yeah, eviction policy is basically a safety net around these two approaches because as you've seen, we just set it. We don't need to worry about providing the options to the set string here. We just send all the keys into the Redis instance and Redis will figure it out automatically. Uh, there is, however, uh, a little drawback there. I'm oh, just semi missing semicolon. So that was the memory management. The last bit is maybe third party providers and uh, kind of cloud implementations. So in Google Cloud, what you have is Redis memory. As I've described cloud providers previously, like Azure, AWS, and Google Cloud, if you ever heard me talk about it, but basically those are big computers. Uh, what you're seeing here, you're not seeing a website, you're not renting a virtual machine in the server. The server that spans across the globe is the computer. You're renting a little space in that computer. These cloud providers, they do not aim to delegate a computer to you. The cloud is the computer and you're renting space in it. Now that means that that computer has RAM and that allows for some fast memory access and there are cache services essentially. In the Google Cloud, you have memory store which has a Redis interface. So what you can do is you can take the Stack Exchange Redis library and you can hook it up to this instance. You can create an instance. I currently don't have a VPC network as you've seen me set it up a couple of episodes ago, but anyway, it costs a lot as well. The point is you can have managed instances. You don't need to spin up a virtual machine like we did a couple of episodes ago. You can have a dedicated service that the cloud provider manages for you and it is a familiar interface, right? So you can always migrate between this uh, built-in and managed service or your own bespoke service. Uh, but the thing with your own bespoke service, what you can do is how we have a Linux machine and hopefully you've implemented or deployed a couple of pieces of software. You can have the Redis instance running here and you can run a Docker image on the Linux machine as well, right? So you can have two things on the same machine or let's say even if you have a distributed cache, your Redis cache is somewhere else, you make sort of not a bastion host but a proxy for your Redis. So the Redis is sitting somewhere there but you don't interact with Redis directly. You put all requests through this API. And this API, it can hook up to PubSub queue. It can uh, re read through the database. And th I guess this is what you would do if you needed a lazy reading on your cache. You would have a service, you would call this service, and this would call the cache. And if it's not in the cache, it would then go to the database and return it to you. So the service acts as a proxy or a wrapper for the Redis cache. You can then listen for PubSub queues. And the re reason you want to listen to PubSub queues is because at some point, maybe you might need to flush all that data. You do not have the option to use flush all on the iDistributed cache interface. Maybe you want to emit a message from one of your components within the system that basically says, okay, we're in situation A. This means we should flush all cache because we've updated our database schema. And if we don't start caching the new bit, we're going to start missing data and some other components are going to start failing. So basically emit a message, all the caching instances that we have all over the cluster, they receive the same message and they all just bust themselves. Or bust themselves. <laughs> they all flush themselves and you get basically fresh instances. The alternative is, of course, you maybe you don't want to implement no pub sub queues. You basically, as you do a release of or update your database, you're like, oh, okay, you know, let's, let's just kick all of our Redis instances. So you just refresh them all, memory disappears, and you get fresh ones, right? Maybe you just nuke them manually rather than uh, having a system do it. But just keep in mind, having a server in front of your Redis instance is still an option, and that can allow for some in interesting functionality of actually extending the Redis instance itself.
Nevertheless, hopefully you've enjoyed this video. Thank you very much for watching. As always, if you have any questions, ask them in the comment section or on the Discord server and see you in my other videos.